I've became a father since then. I've won a whole Super Bowl. You know, I, I've become three different people. Yeah. Three evolutions of who I am, you know, since that time. Guys, we are back here at a Punchline Pod presented by Snapback Sports. Guys, we have a great guest today. But first, we're here with Jack Settleman and the other guest. Let's give a hint here. He uh, has been in the NFL for some years. He's uh, made some nice catches, usually uses one or one hand usually a lot of times, has a Super Bowl ring, has done a lot, inspired a lot of people to have hair lost due to dyeing their hair. He's a true trendsetter in many ways, Mr. Odell Beckham. Yes, sir. Appreciate you having me, Brody. Mr. Beckham, talk to me. How you doing today? I'm blessed, you know. Uh Practice, get some time off, get some time to recover, heal, man. Got a big mission big in mission. front of us, you know? Like yeah. you said, you said something about a ring. Um, and I'll tell you, you get into this game for those kind of moments, and there's no feeling like that. Um, you know, you're running onto that field, that clock hits zero, and knowing that all the hard work and uh, all the pain, everything that you went through is for that. It's truly an incredible feeling. I think um, we know what task we have at hand, so I'm trying to figure out a way to get it done. We will get into more about these, you know, for you rings, for yeah. me singular ring. Jack, start us, start us off here with the with the show today. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned it. You also said you were going to win Super Bowl MVP. So take us through that range of emotion that whole day, from yeah. playing your first Super Bowl all the way to you won the Super Bowl, but you're not on the field to partying. What was yeah. that day like? Uh, I think you start with the night before, and uh, you just laying in that bed, and it's kind of like every single memory of you playing football from peewee football to the turkey bowl when i was eight years old in the freezing cold and rain on the you know blackwell bears or whatever team you know that it was like it just you start with like your entire journey of this game that you dedicated your whole life for um and you know just like every other game you know i don't sleep the best before games or wake up hungry or eat and um you just kind of wake up that day and you don't feel any pain at all. Whatever you've been going through, it's, it's gone. Because I don't know if it's the feeling of no matter what happens today, win, lose, or draw, like this is the last, this is the last game I have for a while. Um, and I just remember, you know, waking up, you know, getting a little breakfast, getting on that bus and going to the stadium. And it's just like a feeling of like, man, I'm really, really playing in the Super Bowl. And, uh, you know, as you warm up, for me, one of the biggest things is that national anthem because it feels like, it feels like a cue. Um, to let you know, like, shit's real. You know, this is exactly when it's real. Um, that national anthem comes down, and I just remember tears, you know, just started running down my face and just, you know, looking to God and just being like, man, thank you. Like, win, lose, or draw. Thank you for this opportunity, for everything that's happened to me in my life, for every wrong that I've done, for every right that I've done, for every, for every everything. It's just like a truly incredible um, sense of gratitude that you have run through your body. And, um... You know, it didn't. It didn't go the way that I would have wanted. It, it went. The the outcome is what I would have wanted. Um, and I just think when I say I would have been Super Bowl MVP, I hate the kind of coulda, woulda, shoulda, or ifs because you know it's not what happened. Um, but with that being said, it was the way that the game plan was set up. The mm -hmm. way that you know they were going to use myself and you know Cooper Cup was already on record breaking season. So it was more of like we're going to put Coop to the other side, and if you play him man to man. Good luck. You know, uh, we knew that the Bengals like to run man to man, and we were running a lot of shit out of like bunch formation. And just the plays that I had had in practice, like I'm saying out of the 15, 16 plays, all 15, 16 worked. Like I, I've never, I've never felt more confident in a game plan and what I was gonna do. My body was feeling good. Um, I was starting to feel back to myself after going through, uh, you know, ACL, sports hernia, blowing my ankle, mm -hmm. like, I was just finally feeling, you know, semi back to, you know, things that I knew I was capable of. And it just was an unfortunate, um, you know, thing that kind of went down. It just felt like a life lesson to me. I was running a shallow route, simple enough. If it's man coverage, you keep running. If it's zone, you, you sit it down and park it. And there was, um, it fit, like I say, it felt metaphorical because I mean it like there was a bit of 
indecision in the moment of like, is it man, is it zone? If I mm. stay on the run, I can catch it, turn up, make a lot of yards. It kind of is zone. I really should sit it down. And it just wasn't like, you know, definition of what I want to do, sit it down, park it, and probably would have had my feet under me a different way. Some 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 move that I make a million times over without even thinking about it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I just remember being there at halftime and I was just crying, you know, my own pity party, boohooing to myself because it's like, bro, this is, I've been through a lot. Like I had a shitty first playoff run um, and I wasn't necessarily, I feel like I wasn't necessarily ready for that moment, but this playoffs, like I was ready to redeem myself. And I felt, you know, I had a great playoffs, you know, leading up to that. Um, and I was ready, I was ready for this moment more than ever. So halftime comes, I'm in there having a pity party. I remember crying back there to myself, they get the ball first. I hear the crowd roar, I look up, um, T Higgins jumped, grabbed, mm -hmm. you know, Jalen's face mask, he scores oh, a touchdown. Yeah, I remember Remember, you know, that's that definitely. Mask. I mean, I'm not one for offensive pass <laughs> interference. But I, I was at that like, moment, I for sure. Yeah, I was, you know, um, and I remember, I remember joining that Rams team late, and they were already a great team. You know, I had got to choose which team do I want to be on. How can I help this team be impactful and help them, you know, with their ultimate goal, which every team sets out before the season. And um, at that moment, instantly it clicked. Like I got up, I wrapped my knee with a little brace or whatever it was, um, got up there, threw my, my hoodie on and went out there and tried, you know, I was very emotional still. Like it just was like heartbreaking, mm -hmm. you know, to not be able to, to do the thing that you love. Um, but I, I knew that that moment was so much bigger than myself. I went out there, I tried to cheer my teammates on the best that I could. I remember looking Stafford and Coop in their eyes like, it's all on y'all. You know, y'all busted y'all's ass more than anybody up at 5 a.m., Every single day for meetings. These people were in there at 5.30 a.m. for meetings, going over each individual detail. Um, and I knew that, like I said, I knew that that moment was bigger than myself and just tried to go out there. I kind of had a feeling that no matter what, like God was already, like the, the outcome was already determined. Um, and in dramatic fashion, you know, he scores in the end. Uh, you know, AD gets a sack and just a lot of, a lot of it, it just was, it's the most incredible feeling running on that field knowing the clock hit zeros and you've accomplished like the ultimate goal. You want a natty, right? I want a natty. You know, that feeling is like, it's one, I, I've I've been on, one of the best teams I've ever been on in my entire life it was my freshman year in college, LSU. The remember, remember the 5th of November game. We beat Alabama at Alabama, probably the livest stadium I've ever. Is that the ever. game of the century? Nine to six. Nobody wow. could score. <laughs> No Man, defense was, was that good. So Nobody okay, so could, a, don't do you that. You were a freshman on that team. Yeah, don't do that though. Don't try and do the day. No, 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 no. I was, I was a, the only reason why I know about like so. He was weird, there. The weird, yeah. The weird thing about that game though, that was like the uh, one of the few games where they had to tell like four and like five star recruits like you couldn't come to the game because yeah. tickets were like just that sold out. And okay. I just remember like I've obviously was growing up in Alabama, went to a lot of Alabama games. Yeah, went to as a. High school, I went to Alabama, played at Alabama. That game was by far the loudest I ever heard a stadium. It was like, I mean, it was it was a lot. It was Alabama fans. There was a lot of LSU fans in there too, and it was just, it was a defense fest. It was. It was insane. Like I, I still, like you said it, and I could feel like the sensations still run through, like the goosebumps come through my body. Like I feel like I could still smell the grass of the way that that game. It was, it was crazy, bro. I've never in my years, that goes in one of those games that I'll remember for my entire life. Um, but like I was saying, you just know that feeling of running on that field and that clock at zero and you just, you've accomplished like the ultimate team goal um, and, and become a champion. Hey, I ain't gonna lie. I need to win a Super Bowl, man. We need to <laughs> win a Super to. Bowl, man. Nah, Golly. We well, you said at the beginning of every season that teams set out same goal, win a Super Bowl. Yep. Every team you've ever played on, do you genuinely feel like that was their goal or it was accomplishable? No, nah, it's what's said though. Yeah. There's there's no way anybody's like, oh, we're gonna do the best we can this year. Like it's not, it's just not realistic in this in this sport. Um But you do think you're gonna win it though. Every team. Some really? like, <laughs> like you get every some new pieces, you're yeah. in training camp, you're like, oh, we're we're gonna we're gonna win it this year. You know, because nobody's nobody, anybody who has or wants to be great or desires you know, to achieve certain things is never going to set out and be like, well, just wish for the best this year. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's just not, it's just not, uh, person, it's never been in me. 
Um, I remember being on the Giants teams when we were six and ten, but we were like, well, we about to win a Super Bowl this year. Like, no question. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you, it's just it's just the mindset that you yeah. that you have to have, whether it's false or or not. Like, yeah. it's just it's just how you go about and enter the season. Yeah, if you yeah, I know when you look back on it though, you'd be like, we didn't have a chance. No but, chance. <laughs> like, I just think about like our even when I guess I first got to Ravens, like I feel like our we had some really good defenses early on, but. I didn't know if our offense was could take us all the way. Like looking back yep. on it, but at the beginning of the season, you're like, I feel like if you don't have that mindset, you will just get kicked. Like yeah. you don't have a chance. Like you really kind of start knowing when you get about like midway through, because you get to the trade deadline, you like we need a lot of pieces, or like we're we're like we could add a piece here, add a piece there, but it's so many little things that can make you win or lose a football game. Like you can actually be a pretty. I think I just saw the Giants. They were like three plays away from mm -hmm. making the playoffs in three different games. Like one was a missed field goal. Mm -hmm. Bills at the end, they must at score the end. end. So be but that that is that is definitely the mindset. No. Um, when you're going through free agency, how many teams would you have gone to that weren't gonna compete for a Super Bowl? None. None. And was and he was, recruiting you? Oh, you're talking about this year? Yeah. Oh no, I wasn't. Is, is it can you I was thinking about this today. Do you think the pan like can you really tell if a being that someone that did free agency, I haven't been in free agency, hopefully I never go in free agency, but yeah. can you really do you think you can truly gauge who can win a Super Bowl? Do you usually base it off quarterbacks? Well, like how did as a wide receiver, top wide receiver like yourself, how do you base that? So I think for me, this was a different part of my life as far as the journey. Um I'll take you back to free agency when it like it was a crazy situation that happened with the Cleveland thing and I, they wanted to try and put me on waivers, which means waivers means from 32nd to first, mm -hmm. whoever the worst, worst the best gets to choose you. And it was a lot of like, you know, you know, the paperwork is tough sometimes. The business side is tough. Like we had to really, you know, get lawyer esque to like, you know, to break to break all that down. So I remember even being able to get into the situation where I got to pick who I wanted to go to. Um, and for the people who always said, you know, this, that, a third about me or whoever I was as a person, all of those top teams that were in the playoffs were teams that were calling and lined up wanting me to to join them from, um, you know, San Fran to the Packers, really, where I wanted to go, the Chiefs, Green Bay, um, uh, obviously the Rams. Like, it was, it was really wherever I wanted to go mm -hmm. um, on multiple phone calls, head coach. Hey, this is Coach Reed. Hit me. This is Belichick. You know what I mean? Like it was, it was the craziest time period of my life. But it was a great. It's great to feel wanted and feel that your need is, um, or that you're needed. Uh, you know what I mean? And then going into free agency this year, like I'll tell the truth. Like I wanted to. You know, there's semi a bit of me that like feel like the Giants sent me off. I've said it before. Sent me off to Cleveland to die. You know, they could have. I could have went to the 49ers. I could have went to the Patriots. I could have went to teams that had you know, a chance to be great. And that's not what their desire was. Their desire, you can't tell me that this was the best trade package we could have got for you. No, your desire was to, um, you know, kind of fuck me over a little yeah. bit. It's how I feel. You know, you feel like I made a fool of you or the organization and that was never truly like my intention. Like I'm just that competitive. Like I wanted to win. Like I, I always wanted to win. I'm tired of being six and 10. We haven't done anything to make changes. Eli's going out. You know, I'm texting Eli like you're seventh on the list. You know what I mean? Like for, yeah, for the yeah. greatest of all time. Like I want to be, I want to see Eli go out with another Super Bowl. Like we're not putting the pieces around him. And I feel like I was being wasted as well. Like that's how you know, like stats is cool and shit. But like when you losing, yeah, it yeah, doesn't yeah. feel like, okay, yeah. cool. I had 1,300, whatever, 1,400 yards, just many touchdowns. Like, bro, you, you lost. You know what I'm saying? Like that doesn't, <laughs> like it's cool. With New York, you signed a big extension. Did yeah. you play it that next year? When did that trade happen? So I signed my, um, well, they signed me to the, I heard, my fourth year. Came back, was literally having the best, the, the year before I got hurt was having the best camp I had ever had. Like all of my stats show trending numbers, numbers, numbers. Got hurt, came back from injury, missed the last four games, still had, you know, almost 1,100 yards, six touchdowns, 70 something catches. Like it missed the last four games. You know what I mean? Still would have finished with a whatever and whatever. Um, so they obviously picked up my fifth year option, but going through training camp, like it looked like I was back to myself and would be able to do um, the things that I know I was capable of doing and then sign the extension. Um, 
five for 95 or whatever it was. And at the time, that was, you know, the highest as a receiver. Left some dollars out there. You know, some things happened. But uh, <laughs> it just, <laughs> some things happened. But I'm grateful for that moment. And then, you know, the GM sitting there and he's like, oh, we didn't sign him to trade him. And, you know, a year later, yeah, I'm I remember, yeah, overseas in Paris. You were in Paris? On tour with, you know, Drake's having shows in London, Paris, Amsterdam. At, at this time, me and Vaughn had rented a house in London. And we were just spending our, our you know, two months in Europe. And I get a call. We're going to dinner. I get a call. He's like, yep, you're being traded to Cleveland. You get, you the words you get to play with your brother Jarvis was like, thanks. You know what I mean? Hang up. Like Who who called you? Dave Gettleman. Same person who said we didn't sign him to trade him. Mm. Um, so, you know, and that was a big, um, it was a lot for me at the yeah, time. Yeah, we, you know? we, we talk, we talk to Roe. Anyone that gets traded, we got to, you know. Yeah. So you did you still you still go to that dinner? Yeah, but I was very everyone around me knew like something was up and it just was like it, it's a lot like you're thinking about You're you're kind of a big deal. <laughs> was like was this like a breaking news in Paris? Like, I know, you know, world Instant. US you're pretty big. I, I imagine maybe worldwide, I don't know. Yeah. How was the was that a were people like Doo -doo -doo? Oh, is that oh, yeah. was it was it that vibe or what 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 was it? How it was, was like Boom, I'm getting traded. I find the little, you know, the pictures of the, the cartoon anime Cleveland. And it's just, you know what I'm saying? Like, boom. <laughs> the jersey swap and Exactly. Yeah. Remember posting it, and it was like, boom. Like, page blew up. Like, whatever it was. Obviously, then it didn't hit the news, and it's just like, what? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it was definitely um, a big deal to be, you know, leaving the New York Giants. Going to Cleveland was... Yeah, it was, it was rough. That was... Yeah. It was it was to me if you know whether, whether that's right wrong or indifferent, it felt like a move that had a bit of uh, a bit of spite, a bit of like you know, uh, you're not finna go somewhere else and shine and make us look bad. So they traded you out of New York. Yep. So it sounds like you're not in love with the New York Giants. Not everyone, but some of them. You're still wearing a Cleveland hat. Yep. Was it? Good or bad in Cleveland, and <laughs> and who got you? I out just of like Cleveland? the little the little diamonds in the teeth. <laughs> yeah. on this hat, you know, who I got you out of Cleveland? Um, well, I guess I can say my pops, but um, it's, <laughs> was he actually? I need to know. He yeah, was in yeah. iMovie. My my pops could not. Uh, no disrespect, pops. You know I love you. My pops could not orchestrate that video. My pops couldn't even post it right. Like you know what I mean. And it's like, as a man who who's a father, uh, I feel like you now can understand. Like I'm gonna protect my cub at all times. And when you're sitting there. And the entire world gets to bash your son. The entire world gets to talk about your son. The entire world gets to talk about production and this, that, and a third. Um, I just feel like in life, not every situation is for every person. You know, I'm sure we've all been in a relationship where nothing wrong with that person. That person's great, but like it just, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work out. Like that's that's truly how I look back at that situation. Uh, you know, it just wasn't for me. Obviously, it it wasn't for the quarterback either. You know, he he goes over to Tampa and thrives. Uh, but I just think that for me, my pops had just had enough. Like, you know, his name's Odell Beckham Sr. I'm Odell Beckham Jr. At the end of the day, like, he carries that torch and that legacy as well. And he just kind of had had enough. But there's no way in hell my pops could fucking make a YouTube <laughs> video or would take the time to ever do that in his life. This was something that was sent to him or found, a 14-minute video. Like, you know what I'm Damn, saying? Like, it just... yeah. Crap. You know, yeah. But at the end of the day, on, on you know, on you know, that's that's insane. That that's you could right. even my dad do, wouldn't be able to do that either. Honestly. That you could even do. My pops would never. But like in hindsight, you could always the the world we live in. Like you could always find something on the other end that might could support. Like whatever narrative yeah. one tries to support, like you could always find evidence for it. That's how I feel about it. A quick announcement: Odell signed a jersey for us, so we could give it back to one of you guys. So hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, and we will announce the winner for one of our subscribers after the playoffs. Now back to the show. I got another question, not about Cleveland. You were playing at MetLife. It's a primetime game. You run a was that a double move? I think it was. I think it was a double move. You get held a little bit by my boy B Carr. I didn't think it was DPI, but whatever. <laughs> Throw your arm back. Eh, make it catch. <laughs> Obviously, it's crazy. Did, like, it's actually insane. Probably greatest catch ever. At that time, did you realize how crazy of no. a catch that was? Or was it just like a, oh, I made a catch. Like, oh, uh, I'm him. No. Uh. Yeah. 
Like, cause the, you know that yeah. arguably that is we were talking about it earlier could be as for sure top five greatest. Good catch. You know, yeah. I mean, obviously it's probably a top. Well, just in general, just one of the greatest plays of all time. Yeah. Did you what? What was? Did you know the and with? I feel like the aftermath. I mean, I'm even me, you. I'm. I don't know how much young. I'm not that much younger than you, but if you want to catch something, you're like, oh, OBJ. Yeah, like yeah, it yeah. was. What what it was an iconic moment. Talk to me about. Did you know that? And then just the. I feel like it blew up for a very yeah. long time. I, I think. No, I know for a fact at the time I didn't know um, the magnitude of the moment, but I think that's what life is, and especially that's around the time that you know. Going viral was like a thing or whatever it was. And I definitely didn't know the magnitude. But for me, the year before, uh, I was a junior. We were playing Auburn in the rain. It was a pass down the right sideline, and I tried to do the same thing. And I remember posting on Instagram of me dropping it, being like, next time it's mine. Literally, the same way the ball came out, the same spin. Like, I've seen this. Jarvis Landry, Tyron Matthew, we were uh, our freshman year in the Georgia Dome catching punts, uh, play, about to play Georgia for the SEC championship. Back there catching punts like this. We're both doing it. Jarvis is left-handed, so the way that it spins is different, but he has some of the best hands I've ever seen in my entire life. Actually, as a matter of fact, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be the person, player that I am. I wouldn't, all the one-hand catches, like it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for Jarvis Landry. Like he took me from wanting to be good to understanding what it takes to be great, you know, even the mindset thing. Um, and I just remember... You know, I did this a million times. I had seen this ball a million times. If my eyes were closed, I could probably do it again. Um, and I just remember we're about to run uh, out and up. Coach calls a timeout. He about to change the play. I'm begging him, Coach, no, please. Like, I'm just thinking I'm going to run out and up and score. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's time so for a touchdown, was, not, not that. Was touchdown coach, coach, that. please. Uh, Eli and him, uh, don't rush the double move. All I heard was rush the double move. Like that's, <laughs> you know what I mean? Your mind, like now, now you're like, I'm, I'm hearing this, that, I'm ready to go. Rush the double move. He's trying to close the sideline. And I just remember, you know, understanding like body leverage and not physics, but yeah, in a sense, like if he's leaning on me, that means. Well, kind, I feel like if, you kind of OPI'd him a little bit. All I did was this. I'm leaning on him. He's leaning on me. I just moved the chair that way. Mm. You know, in basketball, somebody's doing this to you, doing this, and you go like that and back out the way, they might fall. Like, that's all That's all that happened. Um, and then going up, grabbing it, and, and, and standing up, like, uh, what's the movie, Gladiator, where he's like, are you not entertained? Yeah, that was, that, 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 that's, that was, that's it was all definitely that. That I felt, because, like, for me, I had been prepared for that moment. Um and I think the reason as to why, you know, I, I'm not really up for the debate. Uh, I think as far as actual skill to make that catch, like we're, we're talking about something completely different. It's not like somebody who's made one one-hand catch. Like this is like, you know what I mean? You can go back to my college state with Jarvis in practice and we've done some crazy. We've done some crazy. So like I also think that everything is about moments. Like life is about the moments. And Sunday Night Football, Giants, Cowboys, everyone's watching. Like yeah, you can't. Really. You can't, if this isn't a, you know, one o'clock, nine primetime game in the day. Like, this is under the lights, you know, the biggest stage. Um, and, you know, people always like to be like, oh, it was one catch. I'm like, bro, that was touchdown like eight of the year. Like, it wasn't, like, it was my first touchdown or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So, I just think it's about moments. I think, um, not to be like, it's like lightning striking, but it just was something that happened and I could go a lot of places in the world and people who don't know football know who I am because of that. That's mm -hmm. what happened in, that literally just happened to me in London. Yeah. Dude was sitting right in front of me. He's like, yeah, man, I don't even, he played the Ravens. Oh, nice. I don't know much about NFL, but you know, Odell Beckham, that one hand catch. I was like, yeah, yeah we're playing in London. Yeah. <laughs> the Ravens, he's on that team. Yeah. So yeah. So, that. all right. So you have that moment. Yeah. Pause, pause. You actually inspired him to go to a football field, try football for one day. So. What? And he failed? <laughs> Oh, he never played again. It was right, what, but, uh, he said he saw that catch, went to the field. And this is actually an older man at the time, but <laughs> he inspired him. So I'm sure you hear that a lot. Well, it seems pretty cool. So that's your starting moment, but it continued. Like, yeah. it took off from there. What was the first thing that happened that you were, like, in a different level? Marlon talks about levels all the time. Yeah. Like, there's we fame, and then there's fame. Yeah, we, we talk Love. about we talk about the, the, the listers. Yeah. You know, you got the A-list. Yeah. You know the B list, C, D, E, F. What list do you put yourself? I'm so someone. <laughs> what list do you put? Quavo's 
something. She did something for Quavo. She used to do something for Quavo. And she was like, you know, she gave me the best way to figure out what scale, what letter yeah. you're on. Alphabet. So she's basically saying if you go to the airport, how many airports do you get recognized? Okay. And that's the best way to gauge. And so when I'm in Baltimore, you know, get recognized. I'm in Alabama, you know, where I'm from, get recognized. That's kind of about it. That's so it? I, 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 I equated that. Not even that. like LA, New York, big airport? Nah, nah, nah. Okay. Nah. So what's that put you at? You know, I, I put it at A, B, C, D, E, F. I'm like a G-ish. Okay. Like I'm a le- like there's some people that's just not yeah they don't everyone, get recognized at an airport yeah you know what I'm saying so I feel like there's a big two. I think the glasses and the hat look might throw them off yeah, yeah I do go true. glasses and hat. I don't I don't like, like you kind of got signature hair like you gotta just yeah see when I had the fro though I was a little I might have been you know one one letter up but I'm cool with that obviously you're a A B yeah. A B well type is guy. there a level that doesn't go to airports. Maybe a bus station? No, like, like oh, a, just like they just don't like travel. Private. Oh, like, I mean, have you been to BWI? <laughs> yeah, I just got in <laughs> two days ago. On oh, do you beat up? Do you? Oh yeah, you he's got, on Southwest. Yeah, let's talk about um, let's talk about flights. Yeah, love it, hate it. Once upon a time, I saw you were on an airport. I mean, you were airplane. Yeah, I think you had to get off that flight. I'm not yeah. sure. What uh, do do you? Talk about uh, what what was up with that that situation there? Was there anything going on with that situation? So, like we've all had, you know, you go out with your boys, you're in Miami, you have a good time, you know, th- there's only a certain I should have got kicked off one. Yeah. There's only a certain amount of flights. Um, only a certain amount of time that I could have gone home to see my son. There's only one flight that has the lay down flat. It's 9 a.m. You know, so we go to we go out in Miami on a Saturday night. This is Sunday morning. So I'm going straight to the airport. You know what I mean? Like I'm going straight to sleep on my flight. Thank you so much. Have a lovely service. I don't want any filet or whatever y'all are offering. I'm good. Like I try to I look through the movies. Um and you know, when you board first, and I've I boarded first first on this flight, because I was like, I just want to sit down. Mm-hmm. So I boarded first first. Not only did I board first first it was delayed by 35, 45 minutes. So I'm fighting the sleep that I'm, you know, I'm ready to go to bed. There's a reason that I took this flight so I can go to, go to bed, lay down, done this a million times. So um, I end up laying down. I kind of like put my seat back, but I didn't put it down all the way because I, I know that they get like this and it's like, oh, you got to put your seat up for takeoff or no, nah, like, bro, I'm going to bed. <laughs> not to be like that, but if this thing goes down, this 45 degrees is not <laughs> helping me. I'm sorry. I, I always feel like that's... Why is that such a big like, deal? Do you put your, do you put this your was phone a late, on airplane mode? No. Okay. Like what, dude? I've never heard that. Me what too, is that? I, don't I, mean, I think like, it's a myth. Anyways. I think it's... Yeah, yeah. Long story short, um, I fall asleep. I'm like, I'm tired. I can't. I don't want any food. I don't... There's no movie on here that I want to watch. I was trying to like watch something or I could stay up mm-hmm. so we could take off so I could, you know, put my seat back. Um, so I was woken up to be woken up to tell me that I couldn't wake up. <laughs> that That's how it went. Um, and you know, basically like the people who are working the crew or the airline, like they get to choose whether you stay on that flight or not. Um, and I don't know what it was. It just, he, he woke me up. There's someone standing over me like this. I'm like terrified. There's cops all around me. I'm thinking like, I'm thinking we've landed in LA already or wherever I was flying to LA or Arizona. I'm thinking we landed, like what, what happened? What went on? I'm like, Oh God, like this is like a, you know what I mean? Something out of a nightmare. And they're like, sir, you, you were unresponsive. Like you were refusing to put on your seatbelt. I'm like, so someone who's unresponsive, how could, how could you refuse to put on a seatbelt? Like, which one is it? Like, I just need for y'all to like clarify was I unresponsive and you were concerned for my, for my medical or was I, being a jackass who refused to put on his right. seatbelt. You know this what I'm saying? A, you know makes, how it is. This makes you, a lot of sense. You know how you are when you sleepy, like, bro, I don't but, like to be bothered. Yeah. Like, I'm bro, t- don't wake me up. Like, this makes a lot of sense. The same way that everyone else paid for this seat, like, I paid for my seat too. They never touched you, huh? No, nah, he's like, like, they're tapping you. You know, I don't like to be waking up like that, bro. Yeah. Like, I, I'm not nah, like I, the I, most, yeah, that makes you know sense what I mean? Now. So, just, so long story short, I'm sleep. Like, I'm, I'm sleep. Like, I had already been asleep for an hour now. You know what I mean? Like that's at least forty five minutes I've been asleep for. I might have just been touching rim. Like you know, what I mean? I'm, 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 I'm sleep. I I actually tried to do that something similar to that in Miami and, and missed. 
I just missed my flight. I was you like, you know what I'm saying? I'm you're not- gonna go out and you're gonna get your sleep on the plane. Yeah. So you really dead sleep. You out of there. Out yeah, of there. you sleep. I'm gonna wake up in LA. Thank you. Start my day. Whatever it was. Boom. So they were basically just like, like I'm like. I'm fine. The officer was like, he's fine. He's responding. Like, I don't know what y'all want me to do. And the, the people in the back are like, no, he has to get off the flight. Like, did, is the baby awake yet? You know what I'm saying? Like, basically, like, I'm like, it, it was a it was a personal thing for yeah. whatever reason that went on. Like, I don't I do bother nobody. Think about this. We talk that. about me being an A, B list, whatever it is. The last thing I would want to do in a public airport is draw any more attention to me. I walk yeah. through with a hoodie, my hat low. Like, I just want to get on my flight, be unbothered, go home. That's what I want to do. Instead of spending $40,000 to get from Miami to LA. Mm. Like, God forbid, like, I want to just hop on a flight and not be bothered by anybody. Yeah. The last it's thing I would want to do is be seen and cause a scene. So they basically, it basically came down to like, no, you have to get off this flight. And I'm like, like, can you explain why I'm being removed from this flight? And it's like, oh, well, you're, you were unresponsive and they're concerned for your medical. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm fine now. We're sitting here having a full-on conversation. Like, there's no slurring of the words. There's mm-hmm. no nothing. Like, I'm the officers were like, he's fine. Like, he's fine to fly. It's your call. And they were like, nah, we don't want him on our flight. Oh, no, we don't feel safe with him on our flight. Like, whatever it was. Like, bro, I've grown, man. Like, I can go to bed. I know for sure if this was somebody else maybe in this seat, like, if you probably would. If it was Marlon, you would have been good, right? Probably wouldn't have said nothing. The glasses, they would have been like, oh, he's good. But you know what I mean? Like, I to put on my whatever, whatever put on it my was. Voice. So, Sir, so I'm fine. this is the part that, like, I've tried. Officer, I'm, I'm completely fine. <laughs> <laughs> you, you broke out a new voice. I broke out. Hey, 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 listen, I know how to do it, but it no, was just I, like. I think I remember seeing the lady, like, she just wanted you off. She one wanted me off the flight. Off the flight. I ain't she lie. had an attitude. Like, yeah. she had an agenda, and yeah. it is it is what it is. So my, my biggest problem was, I was like, respective to everyone else who's on this flight, the same way y'all have shit to do, I have shit to do too. Like I'm going to, I'm, this is the only day that I get to see my son before having to go to camp here. Like this is the only, I'm flying all the way across the country just to see him. This is the only flight. Couldn't even take another flight to get in and make it in. Like it just was, it just was all bad. Um, but basically they were like, yeah, if you don't get off this flight, you're going to have to give up your seat and miss this flight. Then everyone's going to have to get. And I'm like, can you provide me? I'm basically was like, can you provide me a reason as to why? Couldn't provide me any reason. If you're going to have to get off this flight, everyone's going to have to get off this flight. And that to me, like once you started like giving me ultimatum and trying to like, Mm. this is the part that I do regret in a sense of like, I never would want to interrupt everybody else's day, but I feel like I'm a part of this as well. And like I I had shit to do too. You know what I'm saying? Like I truly had shit to do too. This is an important, I picked this flight for a specific reason. Like I have a, certain intent and set plans as to why I want to get here. And it just was like, yeah, if you don't get off, everyone's going to have to unboard, unboard the flight and yada. I said, well, listen, brother, then it is what it is at this point because now you've like pissed me off. You know what I mean? Like this is where my ego came into play yeah. and I could sit back. Nah, I, you know, I think that's human. You know what I mean? Like this, Bro, I felt away at this point. You know what I'm saying? Question so. I got for both of y'all. I see these videos yeah. of people like about to get in a parking spot and someone come and like will stand there and like hold the parking spot for somebody. Yeah. If you were in that situation, what would you do? It's like the last parking spot in the. It, it, I. Uh, that's probably why they're doing it, right? Yeah, I guess. I guess. And I, I have been on the plane already. Just keep that in mind. Yeah. That reminds me of. I ain't gonna cap. Whatever plans this, I got, you're running them over. I'm ruining. Hold on, hold on. Now I'm me, not, there's <laughs> no. I I'll be there. We gonna be there in five hours. Let me yeah. tell you. Let me tell you what really set the whole thing off. This is what set the whole thing off. There was an older white gentleman behind me and an older white gentleman in front of me. And I was on some shit. Like, I was like, all right, fuck it. Like, I can't believe this is happening to me. Like, I literally wouldn't bother a soul when I'm in the airport. And I, I like, look back at the person and, and basically, like, with some empathy, like, is this, are they for real? Like, is this really going mm-hmm. on to me? And this motherfucker was like, excuse me. <laughs> this dude was like, just get off the plane. <laughs> Bro, there's no way I'm getting off that plane. Oh Everybody getting God. off with me. So I I, I, I completely ignored him. Like this one, this one is like, God, please be with me right now. Don't <laughs> let me lose my cool, my patience. And I look forward and 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 this other older white gentleman in front of me, he was like, he's like, just get off. He's like, you're just he wanted to say something else. He's like, you're just <laughs> ignorant. Like just stupid. And that to me, it was over with. Yeah. I look, I look at buddy, I said, yeah, everybody's going to have to get off the plane. And that was when Did you see me. Off? Everyone had to get Ooh, off the plane. Okay. And you were the last one to get off. I was the last one to get off. I'm leaving. Everyone's like, oh. I'm like, I yeah, I wanted care. to be like, 
But you know what I'm saying? Like it really, it took everything in me to just keep it chill and try and be respectful. But like, it was the fact that I was about to get off and this motherfucker was like, excuse me, I keep forgetting. I, he was just like, get off the plane. Like with some attitude as if I owed him something like I'm doing. So no. what did you end up doing after? I had to get a whole new flight. Back went but back, you weren't going back to LA though, right? Went you, back to the condo, had to take a flight that was at like 1039 out of Fort Lauderdale. End up getting in hella late, get to see my son for two hours, getting back on a flight. And like, you know what I'm saying? It just was. Oh, damn, you really. It wow, was really it was like up. a specific flight that I needed to be on. And then, you know, everyone sees the scene of like, I'm cussing out the people. I'm, I was talking to one fat person <laughs> who was talking shit to me. And I was basically being like, by the time you land in L.A., like I'm, I could go and get on a private plane in two hours and be there to pick you up. Like that's that. Like once you push me and you like jab at me, like bro, it's it's just up. Like I, I can't help it. That I feel like that's a human instinct. You I got felt the attacked. Money. Yeah, I felt attacked. Like it that's just was. Thing. You know, it wasn't like I would never sit there and talk to people I don't know again. Why would I want to draw more attention to myself when I'm already trying to be low? Yeah, more no, travel. No, get your uh, mic back. Being that you got, you know, playing, might as well go to the waterways. Yeah. <laughs> Once upon a time, you said you've been to the playoffs twice? Twice. So one was uh, obviously Super Bowl. The other, um, you guys did preseason. You were in the Giants. You guys did pre playoff in Miami. Yeah. Um, not sure why you guys did pre practice there. Talk to us about <laughs> that pre-team bonding experience on, right. I believe it was a yacht so, down in Miami. So, Did you guys have a bye? Why so were you this is down? what happened. I so was this is what the happened. same thing. Yeah. We played on December 31st, one o'clock game in Washington. We beat Washington. Obviously, we were already getting into the playoffs, but I don't know if this game you necessarily needed to win, whatever. We beat Washington. All of the boys are on a high. We know we're going to the playoffs. It's New Year's that night. You're going to go out and celebrate whether you're going out in New York or you're going out in Miami. Like, it mm -hmm. is what it is. So we decided we were going to fly down there, have a good little night, hop back on the plane, um, and get out of there. No problem. Same same thing you were going to do in New York. I understand. We were going to fly down, have a good time, right? Okay, cool. The night happens, uh, you know, you have your good time, whatever. We're calling the pilots. Something's going on. You know, the flight's going to be delayed till 6 a.m. now. I'm like, all right, bet. So we'll just kick it. You know what I mean? Get around 5 a.m. We're checking it out. It's going to be 7 a.m. You know what I'm saying? Like, so we end up going to an after party, uh, whether it was, you know, Trey Songz there, Justin Bieber. Like, we were, we were just kicking it. We was chilling. And this was a house that was on the water. A boat ends up. Coming out there, they're like, yo, we're going to, you know, go get on the boat for a little bit. I'm like, all right, well, we're already here. We're already up. I'm not just going to sit in the house. We'll go out there for a little minute. We'll come back in. Mind you, I didn't even get to pack a full fit as to where and what I was going to wear that night. I had to borrow Victor Cruz's Tim's. Like, I had to borrow his <laughs> boots, right? So my friend, love him to death, but his dumbass, and I have to say that so everyone knows... He's like, so he's like, you know, this is the end of the day. If you look at the picture now that I tell you the story, you could tell that no one on that boat thought that this picture would be posted now before looking, going on the playoffs. Over. You could look at me and I'm sitting there like this. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, 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 really, really, like your so shirt's you're on no off. Sleep. We're on no sleep. We're tired. We're ready to go home. We've been ready to go home. Like we already had our night. We did what we needed to do. We were ready to go home. Same way you would have went out, had a good time in Miami, you know, or, or New York, whatever it is, Sunday. Like, you know, we're gonna go, you're gonna go into the steam room tomorrow, you're gonna do the same thing that, you know, people like it's not like a unforeseen thing that that was going on. In fact, back before social media and all that, I'm sure some of the things they did is unheard of. So long story short, you could look at this picture now that I'm telling you the story. There's no way I thought that this picture would one ever be taken, you know, ever be posted. Nor did I even want to take the picture. It's like, why are we taking a picture right now? Like, you know what I'm saying? And I also feel like a picture can a illustrate a moment. It can say a lot of words, but it can also not uh, illustrate what was actually going on at the time. You know, you could look at a picture like, oh, they were on a boat and this and that. Like, bro, nobody wanted to take that picture. No, we didn't even think that we would be there at that exact time. 
you know, we thought we would have been home, whatever it is. Like, I'm, I'm borrowed buddies, Tim's. I'm on a boat with no shirt. Shep's got no shirt. Like, we're all ready to go home. We're tired. Like, we've had a good time. Like, we're ready to, to get ready for the playoffs. Boom. So we get back home, whatever. The flight even got delayed when we got to the airport. Another hour. Now we're not flying till eight, whatever it was. So I, I think we get home. We go to sleep. Obviously, he posts a picture. Who was it? I'll, I'll, the name doesn't need to be said. <laughs> when, when he sees this, he's going to know exactly who he is. Bro, I'm not, this picture is, now that I know. I'm trying to tell you, bro. This you never, background you, of this. You never would have, like, why on it, earth? But it looks like that, though. It looks yeah. like. Nobody wanted like, to right, take that picture. Yeah. 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 It's like, yeah, it wasn't we're not like, like playoffs. Yeah. We're in it. Like, no, bro. We were just going to have a good time. Let us some play. steam because we're, we're about to try and get ready to go on a run and win a Super yeah. Bowl. That's the goal. Was it, looking back in hindsight, was it the best um, decision to even enjoy yourself on New Year's or have a night out? No, but yeah, like, but you're you know, going out. I yeah. see you guys went out real. after clinching. You're like going out. Yeah. You are going out regardless. Regardless, just keeping it above. Also, I think if you guys had won the playoff game, yeah, in the Tims, it would have been an iconic. Picture, exactly, you know? exactly. Now let me, tell you, let, me tell let me tell you. Let me tell you what the real. Like, like, let me I'm tell you. <laughs> let me tell you what really. This is where when the picture came out. The energy, I'm a huge energy person. Like somebody's energy or some some kind of energy can like a like a, a nuclear war field, like it could shut me down. Yeah. And instantly when that photo had came out, and everybody around me and and even in my own self, I had felt like we lost. I had had the best week mm. of practice I had had. I didn't let it bother me. I tried to dance it off, make everyone feel like, bro, we're straight. But deep down inside, something had felt wrong. Like the attention had been shifted from, uh, you know, the New York Giants versus the Green Bay Packers to this boat story. And my my biggest regret about all that is that the that incident allowed that to happen. Not that I went and had a good time on New Year's. Is that I put myself in a situation where this story could be used to create a distraction from what's really going on. Keep in mind, we went and played Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers mm -hmm. in. Negative three degree weather, you know what I'm saying? In Green Bay, at Lambeau Field, at nighttime, in January, it was seven to six at halftime. They throw a Hail Mary to Randall Cobb. You get it, like, bruh, mm -hmm. like you couldn't, you couldn't write it up. Keep in mind, also, I think Aaron Rodgers went and beat the Dallas Cowboys, who were the two seed or the one seed, whatever it was that year. They were 14 and one that year, 15 and one, whatever, 14 and two, blah, blah, blah. Went and beat Dallas at Dallas. Um, you know, this is not like we weren't playing against primetime Aaron Rodgers at Lambeau Field. You know, like we were a great team, keep in mind, but like that was my biggest regret is that it took away from it allowed a story to be created um that took away from the energy of everybody else. And like going into the stadium, even practicing all week, I could just feel that it was done. Like mm -hmm. the confidence had been shot. If there was confidence, um, the energy had been shifted. And again, keep in mind, if we would have won, yeah, it would have been iconic. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it just like, to me, it was an energy that I couldn't overcome, uh, you know, myself. I couldn't pray it away. I couldn't wish it away. Oof. Like it, it was it was heavy. You so know? this time around, there were rumors you were going to rent the spirit of Some Baltimore. Bullshit. Like, it, it makes me mad. I'm like, bro, you act like. So did you cancel those plans? Because <laughs> I was going to come. <laughs> those plans were never had. They were, you know, and then, you know, it's like the joke lives on and it's like that joke's weak and played out. Like, bro, I've I've became a father since then. I've won a whole Super Bowl. You know, I, I've become three different people. Yeah. Three evolutions of who I am, you know, since that time. Um, so it's just like it's like reminding someone of the past, like, oh, you can never change. Like, no, bro, like I've that new, that new York media is real though. Yeah. I feel like you I mean, mean, there's no way to explain that story to the media, but looking at that, I, I, it did seem like it was way deeper than what actually happened. Right. Like, okay, every single person, team, guys are going to go up New Year's Eve. It doesn't matter where you're at. You're going to be up till, you're going to get in the AMs, guaranteed, obviously. Sure, bro, it's New Year's. Like, you, you don't go to you after, bring it, after New Year's. You manifest. You, there's a lot of things that you do. It doesn't mean that you... It doesn't mean that there's some people who don't do anything and they're like, oh, playoffs. Like, I get it. You know what I mean? But not everybody is like that. You brought up, uh, we're going to get back to this, this stardomness. Yeah. You know, we're, we're kind of basically normal kind of so people. So, like, we don't really have, you know, normal, like, hey, Justin Bieber, what's up, homie? Like, you know, LeBron, like, what, what's up, yeah. friend? Yeah. You know, we don't really have those you type of- You don't have of, Brown's number? 
let me maybe it's in my other phone. I'm not sure. I actually do. Um, yeah, who's the most famous person in your phone? Yeah. Oh, wait, I think it's, I think it's you. <laughs> who, who, who would be a famous person? To, like a, you're pretty famous, obviously. Who would be like your most famous person in your phone? I mean. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> never mind. I mean, <laughs> never mind. Never mind. There's uh, a few people. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, say you know, LeBron. LeBron. Yeah, Drake. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, yeah. Have um, you ever been starstruck? <laughs> um, I think to me, um, when, so after the catch, a week later, Bron's playing the Knicks in New York. I end up going to the Knicks game courtside. I'll, t- I'll give you he a good story. He walked up on you. Yeah. I'll give you a good story. Two good How stories with this. Catch, Two good stories with this. So I end up after the catch. I'm going to do it all next week. I end up after the catch, um, you know, get in touch with Brian, blah, blah, blah. He hit you up. We'll go eat a carbone. Man, I'm like, shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he's, I, I literally feel like I walk a little slew footed because he walks slew footed. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was, he's, he's my guy. Like, he's nobody, you can't tell me anything bad about him or like, we got to fight. <laughs> um, so I went to, I remember going to see the game, remember going to eat at Carbone with him. And it just is something that like, I'll never, you know, forget, like, you know, you get to meet like your idol. Like he was one of my idols. Um, and just him being a lifetime, you know, friend, brother, role model, inspiration, being able to give me advice, even to this day, like that was a moment I'll never forget. On top of that, um, I don't know if it was that game or maybe it was all-star game. I think Jay-Z and Beyonce are at, are at this game. Right, so I'm leaving the game. That's why. Yeah, I'm leaving the game, and Jay Z and Beyonce are coming down the elevator. And Beyonce, if the story's not true, it's all good. Listen, and my and she's coming down the elevator, and like, I see them, and I'm like, oh shit, and like, she taps Jay, and she's basically like, oh, O's right there. Boom! So now I'm trying to play it cool. <laughs> I'm trying to be like, shit. Oh, what's up? <laughs> they come down, they say what's up. I'm like, oh, what's up, you? What's up, Jay? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like this is this is. Wait, who'd you smell, Jay? Or nah, nah, I smell, but both of them. They smell like Buddy Jay. Like he he's a, he's an inspiration he's a to all of us. He's that was your legend. first time meeting them. First first time meeting them they for were just sure. All... And it was just cool. And I, it was like a moment. Like they're coming down. Like I could. And never this is forget. Your, and this is your rookie year. Rookie year. This is during football season. During football season. Dang, you're really him. Yeah. Listen, I, I feel okay, like okay. So no, pro, finish your story. This okay, is, this is good. This is okay. good. This is good. So I, 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 they I'm come down, whatever. I get to say what's up. Meet Beyonce. Meet Jay Z. And I just remember, like, that was a moment for me where, like, you talking about, yeah, like I'm really him. Like, I felt like, like, damn, this is this is really crazy. And like for me, I was, you know, when I was riding over here, I was thinking about a few things, and it's something that even popped in my mind today. Like, I don't never like pop my shit and tell people about all the things that I've done, whether I feel like, like you said, about starting people to help them lose their hair from dying it, whether it was literally the exact leg tattoos that I have and people tattooing their their year of birth on their kneecap and this leg of legends and this other leg of this jungle theme. And even today I seen one of my teammates with this tattoo of this cross. You know what I'm saying? Like I, the, You started a lot. The scrunchy socks was that you? Well, I won't. I won't take the okay. the credit for that. You know, that's kind of like an LSU thing. Okay. You know, Pat P was down there doing it, Tyron Matthew. But it's, you know, I feel like one Drake line that I always was said is like, it ain't about who did it first, it's about who did it right. Like that's something that I agree with him on. Like even people can say what they want to say, but I don't think anybody was wearing custom cleats until I came in there and had custom cleats every single week. Signed the biggest Nike deal. Really start doing custom cleats. Now I don't feel. I don't think people step on the field without the. I don't think most people step on the field without custom cleats and designs. You know, some people. Can you help him? No, he's he uh, he wants, sleeves. I'm he sweating. looks negative like, aura. You know what he looks like? Help. He looks like you know the um what are those things called? The bust, the like the the Hall of Fame. Like they look like the statue, <laughs> the bills. Like that's he he wears the sleeves that are right here. The the socks say white and black. He looks like the mannequin. You know what I mean? But <laughs> but. but He's an un- unbelievable, I'm, I'm you know, product, man. football player. And, get her done. And, you know what I mean? He, he's See, my problem is when, just, I, when I wear swag, swag, as soon as I get beat, I'm like, this is why. Right. Cut it all off. Right. Cut it all off. Swag, I... Listen, we which really doesn't really make sense. Excuse. I gave up that touchdown what about because look of good, my feel swag. Good. Doesn't yeah. make sense. Look good, feel good. Exactly. I, I think kind of opposite. If you look too good, mm, bad ball. Bad hey. ball. Because then you was too focused on looking good. 
But if it's something that just came natural and you just threw that shit on. Oh, no, like, I don't have the natural. I, you know, I, I'm more of a, oh, you want me to wear this? Yeah, I'll, I'll throw it on. No problem. You know what I mean? if, you know, All right, but, we're wrist guys, watch guys. Yeah. And you famously wore a uh, wrist watch that was yeah. expensive. What? How'd that come about? Bro, it's funny. Like, I bought that Richard Mille. Um, you know how much that was? Oh, no, 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 no. I no, bought no, it no, no. and it's... got it retail, like, a great deal on it. It was the watch that I wore every single day. Like I wore it in all of my workouts when I was in off season. I wore it in all of my practices, all training camp. Like I didn't look at it as like this is a Richard Mill. And like it just to me was a possession that I worked hard. Like it's a possession at the end of the day. Like yes, it's money, but like the reason you do all this is this guy's crazy. He's crazy. The reason you do all this is so that you can, you know, reward yourself with the 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 finer things in life and to be able to set your family up and take care of them. Like, you can't take this money with you when you go. Like, you know what I'm saying? Amen. Like, some Amen. of it's gonna be spent on me. The most like I'm trying to leave behind enough for my son, but I'm also trying to, you know, teach a man to fish, that whole, mm -hmm. you know, quote. Like I, I want him to be good, but I also want him to know how to fish, you know, not just give him a fish. So to me, this watch was something that it just was a part of me. Like I always wore this Richard. I even had the Wait, what Nadal. Richard? What Richard is this? It was the McLaren Richard. And it was the Raphael Nadal, like sports strap. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it was it that, was very with that blue strap? Nah. Orange. This was um orange? This was orange, yeah. Orange, carbon fiber gray. But it had a it had a gray strap. And it just was something bro, that like bro, I wore all the time. Like Wait, not not that one. Yeah. <laughs> was it this one? Yeah. McLaren Richard Moon. Oh, oh I this one. This watch is special to me. It was the first I Richard I bought. And it matched the team. I thought you bought the, 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 the number. The, 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 the model number for million. it was 13. It was number 13. Like it just. Wait, what happened to the, the Richard Mill that was. Uh... The fake one? Yeah. So listen to this. Yeah, I was so going, I, was I, I had been yeah, looking I for. Going. I had been looking for the Sapphire Richard Mill, which is like. Because it now it had pissed me off that the fact that you had made it such a big deal. This is where I get into my like, <laughs> I love I like I love almost being. Yeah, think about it, with, with a lot of success comes a lot of haters too. Yeah, for sure. And I and I realize that. And like to me, like if if we're trying to be a smart ass, like it makes me want to be a smart ass. So like, there's a certain Sapphire Richard Mill, which is like four million dollars, and a wealthy friend of mine who you know I won't say his name either claimed to be a billionaire. This that and a third. He said I have twenty Richards and. <laughs> Da, 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 da. And I was like, do you have this one? And I'm looking for it. And he's like, easy, you could have it. Uh, not have it, but you could wear it, blah, blah, blah. I get it. So I'm not knowing, you know, to me when I got it, I kind of was like, what? Like this this watch is for me? Like it just didn't seem like it was that one. So he handed me, gave me a fake Richard, you know. Mm. To me, you know, you know, obviously the fake watch busters come out later. And, you know, the idea was like, oh, Wait, you're... That, oh, fake watch busters busted that? Yeah, that's what they said. It was like you I, know, I started following that page. I, I be hoping they so, would post me. Yeah. <laughs> so to me, it was like it was the idea of like you're talking about a watch and you keep talking about a price, like as if, okay, this is three hundred and whatever thousand dollars, and I'm like, okay, so when I wear this one, you're really gonna be mad then that I'm he's wearing a five million dollar watch, a one of five on a football field, like you know what I mean? It became yeah. like a game to me at that point. Like if it's like, why are we making a big deal out of this? You know what I mean, you could just tell me to take the watch off, but people, this is this is what I don't like the about this world. The NFL made a big deal of it, right? This is what I don't like about the world. The, we, they build these people up, they use them to get media likes, clicks, and takes, and then like try and like reverse it all back on you. And it's like, you didn't see me come out with an article. I didn't like post it and be like, Watch on the field, like you know Shadur. what I'm saying. Like I didn't, I wasn't Shadur. when I was when I was out there making catches with one hand. You didn't see me holding these big cameras and running around catching like this. Like no, I was just doing what I do, doing yeah. living the way that I live. You happen to capture that, so it's like it's just crazy that the world runs like that. The world they feel like we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make a big deal about something and use you on our platforms to boost our platforms, but then turn it back on you like you're the bad guy. I do sense. like that. You're not trying to, but once they try and play the game, you're like, yeah. all right, let's play ball. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I'm 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 bad with that. Like it's something that I've worked on, but like I I enjoy it. Like if you want to play, like let's let's play because this game is fun to me. Yeah. I personally want to hear more about Beyonce, but that me was too, that, but that, that was, was that's about all. Like that's about Drake. Oh yeah, listen, Drake. Let's listen. listen there's other parties I've seen Beyonce and had moments and been able to kick it. Like that's something that I'm truly like. I want to say some of my, like, I remember, um, I think at the time she was either 
having the twins or blue, and we were at the um, the gold party Man, after like twins? Vanity Fair. Yeah, right. I have no idea. I just yeah, know she's she got has twins. Blue ivy. And Dang. so at this time she was pregnant. She birthed the, the twins, party, and she was like sitting down, and I didn't mean it in no disrespect, but I was like. Oh, like have fun, like you should dance. We were just having a conversation. You dance with Beyonce? Listen, I feel like she got up and we were about to dance, and I just felt like somebody on my shoulder. I was like, man, it's so good to see you. You know what I mean? I had to go about my other way, but like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's somebody who you grew up like. Beyonce is, you know, Queen B of of women. Like, she inspired generations of women to be, you know, how she is. So. That was a you know another look. Okay, so um, we're just we're just gonna possibly just go down celebrity lane here. Um, tell us about your boy Drizzy. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> Drake is your is your guy. So hey, what, do you call him Aubrey? Yeah, what do you call him? Yeah, oh, we can't him? talk about. Can't, we can't really talk about that video y'all shot. Uh, what video? Oh man, yes, yeah, ah, that was a pretty cool thing. Yeah, well, nah, I mean you can't. Oh, talk was... about you've been in. Other, you've been in. Is a. I have a question. This is a good question. I'm not a big music guy. Mm -hmm. But sometimes music videos look like they're fun to shoot. Mm -hmm. Are they just, is the end product look cool or is it actually kind of cool to shoot the video? A certain video that we did was fun because it was like, it was so light and effortless. Like we were just messing around on the field, throwing the football, like, you know, trying to, he's diving back on, you know what I mean? <laughs> on the ground, like catches so and was like- Was KD in that? KD was in it. Like it, it, it was just, it was just cool. Um, and you know, there was other God's Plan video that I was supposed to be in, couldn't make it, and all this. Like, um, but everybody thinks that we were like roommates or something because he allowed me while he was on tour to like stay at the crib. Best off season that and, I've had. And two thousand and you were saying at the crib. Two thousand and fifteen, I think it was two thousand and fifteen. Where was he on tour at? He was. Oh, you said at his Toronto crib. No, in LA, Hidden Hills one. Oh, I'd mm. be forgetting he's got multiple. Yeah, obviously. Crib right. Over. So stayed at his crib. He was gone. Bro, I'll tell you this. This story, I don't think many people know. So this is here. You go. <laughs> These, I'm I'm getting treatment at 7:30 a.m. Doctor Dave, a guy who I've worked with for a long time. We're in there 7:30 a.m. Hey, pal, how's it going? He's from he's from the UK. He's got a crazy accent. We're treatment at 7:30 a.m. Two people. Walk into the house, no uh, shoes on, feet were dirty. These people had crawled through the gates of Hidden Hills, somehow found the boy's house, broke into it, and they were like, man, they come into the room. Like, imagine how cool, like how, I had to play this as cool as possible because like to me, like, I was vulnerable. Like I'm on a table, laying in a pretzel, like getting the, <laughs> you know what I mean, getting this, they ain't finna run up on you. Know I mean, you. like they, like I was, I was, like if they, if they could have had whatever they wanted, I don't even know the code. Really I don't understand. Why does it seem like that happens a lot in California? I, I feel don't like know I hear how that. this would happen, bro. Was, so. Well, who's a celeb where someone was living in their house for a long time? <laughs> I don't. Know. I know exactly what you're talking about, but I don't. It's know a that. celeb where someone was literally living in like the opposite side of the house, like avoiding avoiding this person for like a long time in the house. Bro, I don't know, but that's too much for me. <laughs> you just made the hair stand yeah. on back. So anyways, I'm getting treatment. They run up in the house. I'm like, they're like, bro, we made it to Drake's crib and da 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 da, -da. Like socks dirty as hell. Like they had to crawl through the mountains to get to get here. So I had to try and like play it cool. They're like, oh, BJ, what's up, man? Like I'm so like- you had I'm to like, like dab them up after you was I had to like dab them up, but I was like on edge at this point. You know what I mean? They're like, man, can we get a crazy. picture? Like I get an autograph and like, I'm, to me, like I don't know if you're carrying something. I don't know what it was. So I gave him the picture of the autograph, boom, kicked him out, instantly called security, instantly called like whoever it was, cops or whatever. But like, I'm talking about broke into his house. I'll never forget that. Broke into his house, 7.30, 8 a.m. in the morning. Like, oh, we made it to the boys crib. Like, that's insane to me. And then I asked you for a picture. Why were you getting treatment at 7.30 a.m.? That's crazy. I was trying to be great. I had a long day of like what I was about to do, work. And you know, like I was really in my like- In the off a, season, trying to be he great. Had a, he a, had a gym. A player. He had a gym at the house. You know, we would get the pool workouts in there. He had the tennis court up there, basketball. Like, I, I literally didn't even have to leave the house when I was training. Huge driveway that had a big incline. Around the corner, there's like these... Um, so you don't got to leave... Oh, there's like there's these there. hills that they use for horses to go up. Like, And I was training on that, running hills. This in L.A.? Yup. This was in L.A. Like, it was one of the best off-seasons I had. You know, always, you know, just was locked in, focused, training. Obviously, like... I think when you stay out in Calabasas, like it makes you a little more like, ooh, do I want to go out tonight? If you want to go out, like, bro, you got to drive. You got multiple. I mean, I'm yeah. really all in this business, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you've been to his Toronto crib. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'd be, I be in Toronto a lot. Yeah, for sure. So I, tell I, I'll I might, tell him this year. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm. For sure. You know, if you're not there, you want to. Okay. You need we'll, to we'll, we'll talk about you it. You actually right. do need a place in Toronto. I to need stay that, this that's, summer. that's what I'm saying. I couldn't like, give you the guy for, for Toronto, but. I, I, this is the thing. I feel like I just need to, you know, where, where you at? I might just run into y'all. Oh, Drizzy, what's up, bro? I'm Marlon Humphrey. Um, we'll figure that out. Okay. Um, Drizzy, Beyonce, Jay. What about Cuzzo? Who the crap is Cuzzo? Your cousin, Saquon. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sa- Saquon, that's my... You know that's my cousin. No way. That's... When did we find out we was... I'm not sure what happened, but he... Now, I might be lying. So, you know, this episode might go somewhere. He find out and make us look me look like a liar. But apparently, I heard... I've actually... Have I ever... I talked to him at the Pro Bowl. I should have just asked him. He wore 26 because of my dad. Really? My dad was rocking that 2-6 back in the day. So uh, that's a story I'm sticking with it. Um, I'm gonna ask him. Man. That's a Let's story I'm sticking with that. it. And uh, so that's that. But well, let's start. You said gold party. I didn't know that there the best is. parties are just colored. But you went to the white party. Best parties yeah. are just colored. <laughs> I never even thought about it. Uh, Marlon's looking for an invite. What do you think he has to do? What level? What list? How yeah, many airports I, does there, he need to be? There's a lot. Of You're gonna have to work for fanatics or something. There's <laughs> only like A's and it looks like there's only A's and B's there. I didn't really see too many even C lists. Nah. There, there were some, some not so that shouldn't have been. You know, because they take the pictures and it's like the guys and that. I feel like like they, they don't let like the, Grant Williams caught a stray. They were like Grant Williams was there. Yeah, I, he's he's a D so, at best. I don't do the listing or none of that. You know, um, I'm gonna break in that joint like they did Drake crib. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be dirty. It's gonna look so bad. Be in your white, in your white. Uh, yeah. How talk to me about the probably the the most no. Is that the best Monaco's party? probably the Monaco's. grand. Yeah, Monaco's probably bigger than that. Um, well, it's worldwide. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's, just a, different, it's a different up. kind of atmosphere. But I mean, Mike Rubin puts together a phenomenal party that, um, you know, I look forward to and regret at the same time <laughs> looking forward to every single year because you just know, you know, what's going to go about that night. And uh, it's just, you know, kind of. It's just one of those things. Like I, I feel like Mike Rube is an inspiration to all of us because he truly, like, he's just got. Seems like he's pretty chill. He's just got a good heart. Like he actually only wants to see people win. There's no like gatekeeping of information or, uh, you know, there's he he wants to see everybody he win. Seems, you know, and genuine. he puts on a great a great party that you know involves you know one or two drinks every <laughs> six minutes or something like that. First yeah. question. Whew. Did Lamar Jackson recruit you to Baltimore? Did no. Marlon Humphrey recruit you to Baltimore? It was all uh, Mr. Humphrey. It was all Marlon. Recruiter Marlon, finally. Thank you. It was all Marlon. It was all Marlon. You know what I mean? So why'd you FaceTime Lamar after you... Wouldn't you have FaceTimed Marlon? Uh, I didn't have his number at the time. Freaking loser. He's too yeah. big time. Yeah, yeah he was too... I was hard to get in touch with him. I was trying to... I probably, like, shot him a DM. I but met he Mr. Just... Beckham in... Where did I meet Mr. Beckham? Vegas? Vegas. Well, Kyle Kuzma. Kyle. Kyle Kuzma, man. I kind of got a... Do I have... I can't say I have beef with him, but... What what would you have yo, Kyle Kuzma beef for? It's crazy. Even the even the, even the the getting to the Ravens was nuts because, like, I was telling y'all earlier, like, I think in my heart, like, I was set to go back to New York and be a Jet. Like, it was... Really? It was... Like, they weren't getting back to me really as fast as I needed to. Long story short, like, I remember getting a call over the weekend. They were like, hey, this is the Ravens, right? This is our offer. What is it going to take for you to not take that visit? And, you know, Ooh, chopped it up. they came like that. They they like said, if you, if you do get on that plane, like, just know that the offer is off the table. Ooh. And I was like, can you give me, you know, 20 hours to, like, talk to my people? Because I'm in a different time zone. This is late. They're, you know what I mean? Like, it's mm-hmm. late. I like how the Ravens mean? talk business. I liked it, too. And, uh, Dang, I ain't going to lie. Aaron Rodgers wouldn't have been bad, though. Yeah, for He sure. did get hurt. But, but I also feel like this is not the, the biggest part Rodgers about hurt. all of this is... You know when God wants you to walk through the door that he has for you, not the door that your heart desires? Ooh, if you're going to preach, preach then. My, nah. Come on now. My heart desired to be in New York again. Oh, crap. To oh, be, Hold on. Route. Let me tell you. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> to, <laughs> go, go I'm about to my preach. Bad, my bad, my bad. To be in New York again, to be able to, you know, whether there's marketing money, you know, mm. the Jets, and it's kind of like, you know, I even had the number picked out. I'm DMing the punter. 
or whoever it was at the time, like, hey, let me buy that off you. Like, you know, like I'm I'm set in stone, like this is where I'm going. And they just kind of slow played the offer or felt disrespect. Like they just kind of thought that they had it in the bag, that they were the best team and that it would be a privilege for me to be over there. And um, I, I think it's that quote, like, go where you're celebrated, not tolerated. And mm-hmm. they were you know, talking about, oh, we need to talk to you about your role and how you're going to. Uh, and it just to me was like not like the things that I wanted to hear. And the door of the Ravens was God's mm-hmm. way. Go for ahead, me, bro. You know what I mean? Go <laughs> ahead, right? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Talk it, to it, us. Was, it was truly like every sign, every which way when I wanted to turn that way to, to my heart and my desire, like he shut that door, opened this one for me to see. You know, even before signing, I was like, the Ravens have been a team every year that I hate to play. Like, they're just like a tough, no matter if they're good each year, like, they always are good. Like, what they embody, like, I, I've loved every bit of my time in Baltimore. Um, the culture, Harbs, the way he runs the organization, Steve, every single thing that ha- has happened to me has been, like, you know, one of the biggest blessings in my life. And now we're here, you know, at, at the final part of the chapter um, and have a chance to write history. And it just it just lets me know that God's, he always has been working in my life, but um, this was something that was destined that um, I don't really know if, if you know a man could take this from us. Mm. Amen. Amen. Amen to that. So you get, you get to, get to Baltimore. Yeah. How was the, Obviously, you've been Cleveland, Baltimore, yeah. New York. I mean, Cleveland, Baltimore, New York, LA, LA. LA. I mean, those are those are three pretty, pretty different, very <laughs> different places. <laughs> obviously, yeah, like, so probably a lot of differences, similarities, whatever. But as far as the the fans, the stadium, like new colors, like how is the colors I can rock with? The colors purple. You know, purple is actually my favorite color. Is it? Before yeah. black, after got black is one of my uh, if it's a color, black's one of my favorite colors. And red, but like purple, you know, I wore in college. Like it was just, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't. Oh, he, I forgot. We LSU. did LSU colors for you. Look at I, that. Come on, I think I see that every week. Though. Come that's on. All good. No, uh, no, that's. We'll figure it out. Um, <laughs> how has been the? Because you know, look, man. You know, as a you know, as a Ravens guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We've loved the OBJ show. You know, we want you back. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm just going to put that pitch out there now. What can we do for you? You know what I mean? Yeah. Think on that, ponder that. Get back with me. The fans love you. You know, we love you here in Baltimore. You know what I'm saying? Wooty woot, wooty woot. That was my pitch right there. I'll be honest, let, let I don't I, if if it was, you know, we finished what we need to do, like I don't think I'd really want to, you know, be anywhere else. Like it was, it was that, it was that Home. good to me. Home. For sure, like it was, it was honestly that good to me. Uh, I think obviously finishing it would make it that much, that you know, much sweeter. sweeter. Golly, for sure. But um, I get here. I remember the first thing I said um, as I was just sitting to the side because I was, I was still in my rehab process, and I was watching the defense out there, and I was like, shit, like we got to go against this every single day. We're gonna be a damn good team because this is this is a championship defense, and this was in training camp. Mm-hmm. Like, I've been around long enough to know. you. If you know, you know. Like, yeah, you still have to put in the work. Things have to go the right way. That's how it happens. But once you start to jail, like, you just you just know. And I'm like, this, they're, they're different, bro. Like, this is not easy. Oh, training camp, this man's over here playing outside leverage. Like, I can't work. Trying to, they're telling us you got to go mandatory outside release. I'm like, yeah, bro, they're playing. Down. But you thought he was washed. They're playing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, they're playing. Yeah. They're playing. We, we got to go against each other a little bit in camp. But at the same time, like, the He's, routes we were running, we were trying to, like, install day one offense. Yeah, y'all and I'm changed like, himself up. I'm like, but it this was also is, for beginning game. I'm like, this is tough. Like, you want me to run a go ball going outside against somebody who I had. There was a day that I made up in my mind, like, I'm running all inside release go balls. I remember that day. He caught a nice catch on me, actually. You know what I mean? Like, he, he's going to have to, they're going to have to run. I'm not I'm not going to keep trying that. to release outside. They're, they're already there. But it just... Everything about this organization, the way Harbs runs, is the way uh, you know Steve has put this EDC has put this plan and everything together, and the way Marlo's just recruited everybody to come <laughs> here, so like pre- like Van Noy, I'm have to, I'm you have did to a be, good job. I'm gonna have to be a GM after this, man. Yeah, I can see it. Talk to us about you've had some quarterback, obviously a lot of different quarterbacks yeah. here in your whole career. Do quarterbacks throw different? Like, do you ever make an Absolutely. adjustment? But like uh, Eli Deep Ball. Compared yeah. to a Stafford D ball, compared to a Lamar D ball, compared to a Baker D ball, what what is your perf- like? 
Give us some insight on as someone that turns around and sees the ball. I'll tell you, I'll tell you one person, and you I don't discredit any quarterback because Eli's a legend. Eli kind of dropped. He dropped. I've in? never once, and I put this out. I've never once said no bad words about Baker. As a fact, when I went to Cleveland, like I had bought a house in Cleveland, thinking that I was about to be here and we could, you know, turn this into something that, you know, turn this culture around. Jarvis had already been down there. They were already, you know, changing the culture. So I bought a house in Cleveland. So I believed in Baker, um, and still to this day, you know, we've talked. I know he's got a kid on the way, and. You know, wishing him success and like there's no like bro life's too short to be beefed out over some shit that's not even real but only thing i want and love lamar mr mvp lamar Bliss, two-time mvp i'll put it out there now um different uh, never in my life seen anything like it unless i was playing quarterback myself <laughs> um which i am the fourth string quarterback on this team i just want to put that out there um but matthew stafford i mean if if someone were to tell you to throw a spiral and be like, oh, this is, you know, what a spiral, you know, looks like. And like, you didn't know football. Matthew Stafford is, and he's been doing this since the Reebok jerseys with Detroit. That boy hasn't played for a minute. <laughs> Throwing sidearm, this and that. And, you know, never got that. I remember he threw me a pass in the Pro Bowl in 2014. He threw me a nah, deep ball. You really hey, chill out. sound like he's... Let's do that. Let's chill out. That no, was, I'm just saying. Like he must obviously throw a, something that's he's beautiful about that. He's different. Like, what if he got drafted into a situation like Mahomes? Could he have been Mahomes? Still, one thousand percent. Yeah, no question. He went to LA so Rams. His boss is beautiful. Yeah, that sounds crazy. But yeah, he's he throws a nice football. I tell you what, man. I was watching touch spiral. I usually don't watch too hard of people in pregame, but I didn't play when we played the Chargers this year, and I was watching Herbert warm up. Cannon. I don't know if it's obviously don't know if it's ball. I don't know how that. Cannon. Bro, when I tell you his war, pregame warm up, like you, I know how like these, you know, obviously pro days are coming up. Yeah. Just off watching his pro day, you know how all these people are like, man, Cannon. this guy is gonna. I would draft him first. <laughs> I just off watch, I'd be like, yeah. I mean, it was actually, it was beautiful to see him just throw routes on air before the game. Yeah, he's got a cannon. Yeah. All right, that's interesting. So, man, yeah. so some people you just you just see it, just like, oh my gosh. Yeah. And and this. <gasps> Like you know the uh, the pitchers in the major league who you know throw the, the certain pitchers who throw the underhands, yeah, yeah. Like you know, I didn't watch. You remember the movie Wanted? Yes. Where he shot oh, the bullet the... around. I didn't watch Lamar throw me a pass where you he didn't threw it underneath the lineman's. I wonder when did he start doing that? He he be doing that yeah. a lot. Now. I need to relax. So but talk I, I just, talk, talk it's just about different. He's a different. What have you seen like from a. Guy that's been one year with Lamar, obviously I've been here um, since he's been here. How has it been playing with the most? Well, I'm not. I mean, it's basically probably gonna happen. He's gonna most be part. most valuable. How's it been playing with the MVP? Yeah, for sure. Um, bro, my favorite player was Mike Vick growing up, and you know, I and think, not just football, just uh, every, just everything. You know, the yeah. whole whatever they said about him as a football player. I mean, I hope that they when these you know new articles come out like it's some a weird respect off can be put. It's a weird offseason talk on There's his name. A lot of bad. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I I truly hope that for him. I actually texted him last night, um, just about like bro. You, I've never seen anything like it. Um, as far as what he does on the football field, like bro, we've all seen the highlights. Like we all know. I get caught wanting to watch as I probably should be trying to block somebody, you know? He do be doing some crazy crap, bro. Like, I want to... Go ahead, bro. Do your thing. Oh, my... Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you want to see it. You, like, you want to see the show. I get it. We can watch it on replay later. But, you know, these moments I'll be able to remember, like, forever. Like, you know, I, I'll bring up one play real quick. I remember Saquon Barkley probably was one of the greatest things I've ever seen put on cleats, ever. When, when this man had the football in his hand... I hadn't seen many people like it. I remember I was backside of a play, and you know, certain backside of play, you done ran two deep routes, you come back, like you, yeah, you ain't thinking it's gonna bounce your way. This man makes a cutback, and I, I look back, about. and we're playing Philly, in Philly, and me and him, like I know him so well to know what move he was gonna do. I like juke the same way that he was juking. He went this way, and I went that way, and he takes it 80. You know what I'm saying? Like, And, and it's just Lamar is one of those people who, um, I mean, he's just incredible. And then as a person, you know, people don't know, like, this man is a jokester. Like, he clowns all day. Like, he he's all day. got a good heart. Like, he, 
you know, wants everybody, he, he wants to be great. He wants everybody else around him to be great. Like he, he's just a genuine, a good person. You know what I'm saying? And um, I think that everything he's gotten, um, he's deserved, he's earned, um, and he's worked hard for. So like truly a blessing for that, for him. Uh, and you know, nothing but love and respect. Now he just need to take us home. Take <laughs> us home. All right, take we got a few questions we ask every guest. I'll mm -hmm. start with mine. If the Ravens win the Super Bowl, Marlon said everyone gets a little bonus money, right? Super Bowl's in Vegas. Which teammate would come home with all 200K and which teammate is coming home with zero? I'm not I'm not coming home with zero. I'm from around the way. I'm leaving here with something. I'm leaving here with something. <laughs> but I'm telling you right now, I'm I'm probably the one who ain't coming home with the most because I'm gonna make sure that it is a night everybody that remember. everybody will get to remember for the rest of their lives. Like it's it, it's my duty actually. To make sure, y'all take me home. Uh, <laughs> Lamar, take us home. Um, one game at a time, too. Coach Harbs, I, I know. Um, but I will make sure that it is a night that um, we we remember forever. Who's taking all of their money home? Um, we got a lot of Justin Tucker. Justin Tucker. Nah, nah. Marcus Williams is, too. He Marcus said Clowney. Taking home. You, know who's, you know who's taking all of their money home? Lamar. <laughs> Yeah. No, actually, he's not because he's going to owe me some money. He's going to take me out to dinner. He said he's going to take us out to dinner if we win the Super Bowl. He's he been on this Super Bowl train for a while. He might he might, he might, might go crazy. Good. Well, I hope so. He might go crazy. Who's the... You haven't... You've only been here for this year. Yeah. I know you're as a fashion... You're the least. <laughs> oh, no. Go, go with the question, though. You don't need... You need my bad, my bad. Maybe, like, in your own way... You ask the question now. In your own way, you be killing I, it. <laughs> no. Like in your own No way. one in this room can can yeah. it can be a part of the the list. Oh, okay. Yeah. Who is the you only man short time, you know, but you you fashion guy, big fashion guy, and you walk in with fits on. You probably observe other people's fits. Who on the team is just you like, eh, you could do better. Eh. Um the least, the worst. One of the one of the DBs number 44. <laughs> he probably just Four, All right. Four, four, um, four. There's another great question. There's another great question. There's another great question. And this is my favorite question probably of all time to ask athletes and or people with, you know, that are salaries on the internet, basically. What is the most amount of money that someone has asked you to not necessarily give them to, yo, could you loan me this? Yo, I'm starting this business. Three million. I figured that would be possibly a crazy number. Is that just, the craziest request you've ever gotten? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. But the craziest realistic request. Oh, so that three million was kind of a joke or was that a little? No, he was this. <laughs> and what? Finish yeah. what you were saying and then we're going to get better three million. Um, but like from someone you just wouldn't expect, like it's a number. It's always that. It's a hundred thousand. Like. And what, and what for? For something that was not happening. Mom was 20K for Disney World. To go to Disney? He needed... I, that's People act epic. like I don't have a son that I got... That's an epic I mean? Disney like, trip, though. Yeah, it would be great for them. Hit the bank or something. If Marlon asked you for money... Oh, he's a lot of He got watches. You know, there's okay. all kinds of... Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm bad. I, you know... Even if I go dead broke, yeah, somebody could be little like, I need that watch it. off you then, buddy, and then I'm cooked. <laughs> a little interest off it, you know? We could make... We could, we could. But I don't think he's in any position where he's looking for... Um, loans or anything like that. He's got a nice, healthy, huh? healthy I, contract. Ah, uh, it's old money. Yeah. Blew it all like all these athletes do. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard to believe, but um, yeah. Um, we uh we finish. Shows up. We have one more question. Um, this is you know pre blonde hair. When wait, first off, how did the blonde hair talk to us about? I want to dye my hair blonde. Once you I get married, he used you to think I should go for it. Yeah, it's easy. It, it'll be easy he for you. And once you do it, you, it'll. Once it starts to fade, you gonna it, it's gonna be a good look, bro. It's not. It's not gonna be a major change. Okay. Talk to us real quick about what. When did that? Uh, what inspired that? That trend. Um, I don't necessarily know how it fully came about. I know that. Um, you did it at LSU the first time, right? Or were you younger? I had, you know, dotted orange at LSU. Like, Tyron Matthew even went and had blonde Wait, did hair. He, oh, he did have orange. You know what I mean? He had orange, the blonde. Like, it just was like, oh, it, it was a way of like, where we were from down there. Like, it was a way of like expressing yourselves. Like, you're different, you know, whatever. And everybody has their own. So you kind of didn't start it, but you made it a thing. 
Yeah. Okay, you know? so I'm thinking. I think. I mean, listen. Like I say, the the did the Drake did it best first. Who have I don't know. It, not even not it. even that part either. Like, bro, every, everybody's what gotten inspiration from did it, whoever did someone it. else. Like, yes. there wasn't you know an originator got an idea or inspiration from somebody else. Like, it just yeah, all it the just, trends all the trends come back around. Yeah, for sure. That's what they so, say. I don't know if that one's coming back, but uh, it's uh, get when your son coming up. It nah, might. It's probably not. gonna be time for it to come back through. Soccer guy. Yeah, yeah. Soccer and you guy. played soccer. Yeah. So what do you think would have been in a different universe, alternate universe, winning a Super Bowl or if you played soccer and won a World Cup? The craziest part about all this is that it didn't need to be in a different universe. It could have been in this universe. Uh, when I was 13 years old, they, my coach was from Trinidad and Tobago and I had been playing soccer, um, you know, but growing up the way that we did, like there's no way in my mind I could have imagined when they wanted me to try out for the U.S. national team at 13 years old. and be Oh, you're like a legit soccer player? Soccer was my first sport since I was three years old. Soccer was the first sport that I ever played. It was a sport that I loved. Like, it was every weekend, Biloxi, Mississippi, here, golf course, golf You still play? play? Ever? No, no, no. Nah. Oh, um, wow. Dude, no I kicker. Didn't know you had actual soccer. Not anymore. Damn. You know, and I haven't, I haven't for a little minute. Like, when I put the dream up, like, I was like, you know, it was either basketball or football for me. And then basketball back in the day, you got to go to all kind of camps. And it just was like, it wasn't as easy as, as football was going to come to me, but my mom and I always talk about this and we're like, damn, like I wish that we would have known what we knew now. And don't get me wrong, I'm grateful for my life that I have, you know, but there was every bit of part of me like to win, you know, World Cup and bring it on for the U.S. Like we'd probably be bigger than winning the Super Bowl. Yeah. Like there's no question. Like it's, you know, world, you know, worldwide, like soccer. Um, and it just was something that, you know, I hope my son wants to, you know, play soccer. Like, it's just kind of, you know, what I'll be pushing him towards or basketball. Like, he, he's already loving this little football thing, and I'm not enjoying that at all. Like, I don't want him to play football yeah. unless the NFL comes around and they pay the players when they're supposed to. <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, it just, soccer to me was my real dream. Like, uh, looking back, me and my mom always have a conversation. Like, I wonder what would happen if we would have chose to go that route instead of what we did. You got Elon Musk on our Elon Musk number? <laughs> I don't have Elon. Number. Elon, yeah. You said Elon Musk. Uh, at the every guest we have on, Marlon likes to give away something of theirs that he steals from them. Um, so earlier in the season, he gave away your first ever Ravens jersey. Do you remember that? Wow. You got to claim that. We we owe the fam. Yeah. Um. So there was, I did a giveaway of a jersey that never was mine. That um, I think he wore. So basically, we're gonna gift our favorite, our best subscriber, which isn't really a. We're going if you subscribe to the show, out. we're gonna do a little. Giveaway. Basically, we need an item from you because I already promised a random person that I we never. Can, we got a jersey here. Your we can, jersey, we can get it signed up. Easy, I got you. So it can be. Uh, Wait, so you got it. it? It was the one off my back, the one that. I no, it no, was, it was like your first I was jersey. In the, the first jersey was they in the put trainer. Beckham on. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Nico was kind of mad at me. But. Um, you said game worn. You had never played a game yet, so everyone was clowning you on Twitter. Oh, so, okay. uh, whether it's a t shirt or whatever you want to do. He is a jersey. You, the person listening it. will truly appreciate it. <laughs> we'll get that. Oh, right we're going to do that? Oh, yeah. nice. Cool. You got a Sharpie here. Oh, somewhere. I, I didn't know where you was going with that. I'll make sure I, I, make sure I get that. I appreciate it. Um, um, yeah, we do finish every show with Analyst yeah, Hump. Yeah. So we finish, yeah. College Analyst football Hump. is done, but we I have actually a, big news. I have an alter ego, mm -hmm. um, Analyst Hump here. This mm -hmm. was actually given to me from a fan. Analyst Hump here. Um, guys, last week I came on this show. I told you to take out one to two mortgages on your house, on your car, whatever you were hurting. If you had debt, take a th whatever and put your money on the Michigan Wolverines. I said the spread, my and I, I said alternate. You said my Did I not seven? say alternate? Why? How do you think I paid to be here? The Michigan Wolverines won the football game by? 21 points. 21 points. So for all you guys that say Analyst Hump, he don't be right. He don't be this. Next time, trust Analyst Hump, okay? And we got breaking news here. Nick Saban is out as Alabama's football coach. Retired, uh... Whenever, two days ago, whatever. All you Bama boys who committed, make sure y'all hit up Coach Prime. <laughs> All right. Colorado. Straight to the bowl. Look, I'm not, I'm not going 
I'm not gonna disagree, but well, I'm, not gonna see that for Coach Prom, I'm not gonna you know. agree. I'm not gonna disagree or do what you do. What you got to do. You said you would have hit the portal. I hey, look, man, look. Just knowing how these kids hit the portal. He now, say I ain't hard to find. <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, Saban, man, you were great. Good job. A legend for sure. Is that your th- and Belichick's on out? This. Goodness, what is that you, your full thoughts on you? Saban? You wanted to go over there with Brady Absolutely. for a little bit with Belichick. No question. Um, and and Pete Carroll, Pete, I enjoyed our convo we had pregame this year. Um, I think you guys maybe wanted to draft me. Um, that would have been a nice spot. I had a problem with a deep ball. <laughs> I had a deep ball problem in college. Um, I believe that's... Uh, well, quit. We'll quick fire. We got games this weekend. And we got to... If analysts hum... And I want to hear, hear analysts hum. Yeah. You got to see On his these, prediction. And, and, and I, I want to be like, I 1,000% agree with you or I don't. Okay. okay. All right. I here like, we go. Right, right, here we go. The first game of the weekend, Houston Texans hosting... Odell's former team, Ooh. Joe Flacco. Who Man, I, I just think the 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 light. Ah. Just it's saying. the tech. The lights might be too bright. I mean, rookie quarterback, young team. See, then if we play them, it's gonna be smoke. Oh, it is what it is. I just I think the Browns are gonna take. I think the Browns okay. are gonna get it done. I was you're you're agree. Agree. okay. All right, game two on Peacock. Don't miss the game Bro, you, on Peacock. You put a lot of why you put a lot of emphasis. <laughs> uh, you got Miami it's at 20, the Chiefs. Bro. Miami you, at the Chiefs. Everyone's comfortable. Um, man, that's supposed to be a freezing game. You know, I it's I, it's hard to go against Patty Mahomes. It's hard to go against Patty Mahomes. I'm, I'm gonna go with my homeboy. The the Dolphins ain't been that hot towards the end of the stretch, so I'm gonna go with the uh, the Chiefs. Okay, Steelers Bills. Be careful. Steelers beat the Ravens twice Steelers this year. Steelers did know? beat the... I mean, one time was just mainly my fault. But um, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to go with the Bills. Even though the Steelers come out and really just run... If they run, 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 I could, I, I could see some success there. Okay. Agree. Packers-Cowboys. You know, a lot of people are saying that the, the Packers might... Cowboy. Some people loving the love. That was Jordan Love. I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was pretty good. Um, but I'm going to go with the boys, man. America's team. <sighs> America's freaking team, man. That was a, I'll never forget that pre-draft draft visit, but I'll tell that story another day. Okay. Uh, Rams-Lions. This is a good one. Stafford's return to Detroit. I got to go with the Rams, man. I feel like they're, they're clicking at the right time, okay, even though the Lions are hot. Things. Even though the Lions are the hot team this year. Yeah, still. But I, I'm gonna go with the, the the Ram. Okay, and Eagles Bucks. Man, I wouldn't be surprised if the Bucks just out of nowhere. Yep. Only due to it seems like the Eagles like Juju is a little. It's up. They need to cleanse quick because like I feel like they are a better team than what they're showing. But I'm gonna go wild here and say the Bucks. Jalen Hurts just said he hasn't been able to throw the ball. Yeah, Hurts hasn't practiced. He hurt. Oh, you're gonna have to find that. Dig deep. Um, guys, one last question. Um, basically, what I'm trying to ask right here is, I was really just trying to find any way to bring up that topic we didn't want to talk about. <laughs> and I couldn't think love of it. Love you so much. Analyst hop here. Man. <laughs> hey, guys, man, we love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Jack, man. Yes, sir. Thank you. We Appreciate enjoyed it. it. Yes, sir.